Uh, lesson today is going to be this packet right here labeled, sorry, backwards, floor plans in the upper corner. We haven't touched this. We haven't talked about this. So hopefully I can explain it pretty well for you. Uh, it's actually exciting stuff because you started learning about the architectural scale and we've just been measuring random lines, but you're actually going to get to measure out a floor plan and get a little bit of a feel for that. Um, the neat thing is, is this floor plan comes with zero dimensions, which is why uh, you guys are gonna, gonna be working with this to give it some. So, um, kind of in our three-step architecture project, uh, we started with this guy. If you haven't yet in class, we'll be able to, next time we are in class, you guys will get this, you'll get the answer key, you'll check answers, we'll see if we're doing really well or if we need to correct any mistakes. Um, but measuring lines is boring. It is, but it's a good way to start learning. So you're ready for part two, where we're going to learn all about this guy, and then uh, and then you start designing your own place. So that's pretty exciting. Here we go. Page one gives you a great couple of paragraphs on how to use the architectural scale. You guys are welcome to read this, but truthfully in class, we already covered how to use it. So it's just going to sum up uh, what we did in class. If you didn't understand how I was teaching it, then maybe give this a read and that might help you out. Back page, same deal. Uh, kind of explaining how we break down uh, the inch portion of each scale. So uh, you should already have that. Now, our third page here uh, does have some good stuff on it. What it's gonna do is it's gonna show that when we are working inside rooms, um, in homes, we start our measurements on the inside of the wall, as you see right here, to the in to the other inside of the wall. Uh, we don't get to measure the uh, wall thickness when we're talking about room sizes. It just doesn't doesn't work like that. You get to go with your livable space. The one exception is when you measure the whole size of the house. There you would go exterior to exterior. When we do individual rooms, we just do the interior measurements. So if you're moving in, you know what size it is for beds and couches and TVs and all that stuff. All right, next page, it's gonna, there's gonna be questions that's gonna reference these guys right here. So this is common architectural symbols uh, that you guys will wanna just become familiar with as you flip back and forth. So we got different kinds of windows, different kinds of doors, different, oh, sorry, I'll get that more in view, different electrical and plumbing, um, and just pictures that you guys will see and it'll reference it. All right, then we have our set of questions. Now we're gonna go through a few of these in just a moment, um, but read through and then do your best to answer those questions. If you get hung up on something or it doesn't make sense, Leave that one blank, skip it, we'll get to it when we get back in class. But try to do as much of this packet as you can. Um, so yeah, we kind of got two and a little extra uh, pages. There's 42 questions. Some go really, really quick. Some take a little bit more time. Mainly the ones on the second page uh, go pretty quick. So, all right. Then... You guys have this page here. This is your answer key. I would recommend that you use this as you fill out your answers because sometimes it's just helpful knowing what it's looking for as it'll say width, length, and square feet. Um, it'll kind of guide you as far as what I'm looking for. Okay, and then lastly, we have our floor plan that you guys are going to be measuring off of. Here's what I recommend as you have this at home. This very last page, this floor plan, rip it off. You don't need to be flipping back and forth all the time. It's going to be inefficient. So we got our floor plan ripped off. But also, this answer key, rip this off too. So you're going to have the packet, you're going to have your answer key, and you're going to have your floor plan all separate uh, as we go. So you'll be able to measure those with your architectural scale. All right. And then let's put our skills to work and see what we have here. It says for question number one, we'll do this one together. You guys measure at home. 
Uh, how many square feet are there in the house? You're going to measure the width and the length and multiply the width by the length in feet. This is what gives us square feet. All right, so your teacher's a smart guy. He wants to make videos for you so you can learn at home, but he didn't do any of these measurements yet. So I got to pause it and come up with some answers. See you in a minute. All right, and I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's, let's get ourselves going on this. Uh, so if we went through our five steps of uh, using an architectural scale, step one is determine the scale and... Question one is asking us to measure the house. So how do we know what scale to measure with? Well, the good news is every architectural plan should on there somewhere tell you what the scale is that you need to measure with. So if you look closely, and I'll zoom in here, in the living room, it's gonna tell you one quarter of an inch is equal to one foot. So. That is going to be the scale we're going to use the entire time. One quarter of an inch is equal to one foot. You're also going to notice it's going to have a north arrow saying which way the house is facing. That'll come in handy. Sometimes it's going to ask you what are the windows on the west wall or something like that. So you got that for reference. All right, back to our question. Uh, how many square feet are there in the whole house? So we measure the outside dimensions just for this one, because as we're building, we want to make sure that our concrete matches the exterior of the house. So you get to measure the width. You get to measure the length. Uh, you guys can pause the video and do that, and we're going to see if your numbers match up with mine. Here's what I came up with. Width is typically side to side. As I measured exterior, outside wall to outside wall, I came up with a measurement of 36 feet, two inches. If you're within an inch of me, you did great. If we're a little outside that, try it again. And if you're still not convinced, um, we'll, we'll take a look at it uh, in class, okay? For the length, in this case, that would be front to back. And if you mix these two up, as far as width and length, but your numbers are good, we're, we're fine. All right, 26 feet, three inches is what I got for that. Now it asks also to find our square footage. And here's where things get a little difficult is when we work with a calculator uh, and we work with decimals, decimals work on one to 10, right? You go to nine and then 10 and uh, type of deal. When we work with inches, we have 12 inches in one foot. So what we're not able to do is just type in 36.2 and 26.3 because it's not, not actually uh, point three tenths of a foot. Here's how we fix this is we know that there are 12 inches in a foot and we have two inches here. So we take two divided by 12 and it gives us 0 0.166. So when we go to punch this into a calculator to figure out how many square feet there are in the house, we're actually going to go 36.166 feet. On the other hand here, 3 divided by 12 is going to give you 0.25. So you're going to get 26.25 to punch into your calculator. We'll give it a shot. 36. 0.166 times 26.25 gives us a number of 949 points. Uh, what did I come up with? Oh man, I didn't write it down, but I think it was something around three something. We just rounded the nearest whole number. We don't count square footage, it's decimals. That's, we're getting really tiny. So this house has 949 square feet. That's what we got going on for us. Great, so that's question one. Uh, question two says, if it cost $50 per square foot to build the house, what would the cost be? All right, so we got our 949 square feet in the whole house. For every 12 inch by 12 inch piece in the house, costs us $50 to build. That's assuming 
all of your labor, all of your materials. Uh, we multiply those together. It's going to tell us how much that house is going to cost uh, to build. And you want to punch that into your calculator, see if your number matches mine. We have 47000 Four hundred and fifty dollars. The question is, if you could build this house today for forty-seven thousand four hundred and fifty dollars, would you do it? Hopefully, your answer is yes. Even if you don't like the floor plan, uh, this is an incredible price to get on a house uh, here in Reedsburg. And the reason for this is. Um, the floor plan you guys are looking at uh, and these questions was actually coming from the 1980s. Now it's fine, everything is still relevant except for this number. Your new number to build a house in 2020, uh, it varies depending on what you're doing in there, but it's gonna be about $125 to $200 per square foot to build. Labor, materials, everything. So this number could be multiplied by four. Uh, you could almost be spending $200,000 to build this if you had some really high-end finishes in there. So, and if you were to go to one of the house uh, websites, Realtor or Zillow, uh, you would notice that finding a house for sale in Reedsburg under $100,000 is really tough to come by. So you got that going on. All right, number three, what is the size of bedroom one? All right, now we have a square bedroom, which is great. We measure the width, we measure the length, and we get those numbers. You guys can do that. Here's the numbers I came up with. I got nine feet, five inches, and I got nine feet, eight inches. Again, if you are within one inch of those numbers, we're doing just fine. If not, Try it again. Sometimes our zero isn't perfectly lined up with one side. We'll want to check that. To find, uh, and I guess that's question three. Question four asks for the square footage. Again, we can't put in 0.5 because five inches is not one half of the foot. So we do have 12 inches in one foot though. So we're going to take five divided by 12. You're going to get 0.416. We'll do the same here. You're going to take 8 divided by 12. You're going to get 0.666. So to find accurate square footage, we're going to take 9.146 times 9.666. And you get a square footage of 90.99. Of course, we're going to round up to the nearest number or round to the nearest number. We got 91 square feet in bedroom one. Not a huge room, but big enough for a bed and a dresser, and really that's, that's all you need to make it count. So there we got questions one through four done. And we got just enough time to do question number five. Here's what we got, same deal, it is the living room. Uh, now our living room's kind of weird because it is not a perfect square. Kind of does this, and then it goes this way and over and back. And we got the coat closet. Here is what I need you guys to do: is one, we're gonna assume this over here is square. Great. Number two, we're gonna assume that we're gonna count this space as well, and we're gonna erase this. So I want you guys to measure the width, measure the length, find that square footage, and uh, that should help you with number five. From there, uh, it gets a little better. Sometimes it's just asking you to reference the sheet um, of architectural symbols, and it's a quick one-word answer. And uh, I'm going to let you guys go from there. Now, I will tell you, as you guys go, number 15 is maybe a little tricky so we're definitely going to talk about that in class so if that one doesn't make sense don't worry about it um the rest of them should go pretty good good luck bring this with we're gonna check it off on 
Uh, your next 